Hi, and welcome to Sienna Chalk Talk. I'm John Hawkins, and today we're going to talk about small cells, small cell technology, uh, and small cell backhaul specifically. So we'll talk about what the challenge is that are leading us to deploy uh, small cells, uh, and then the technology options that exist in uh, network uh, uh, examples that, uh, that use each of those, uh, as well as the backhaul options that exist for the mobile network operator. We know that small cells are, are, are needed uh, because the challenge is uh, the number of users being added to networks on a global basis is really quite astounding. These users all want to be mobile. They all want to have access uh, to their uh, smart devices, which in turn require more and more data from the network. So not only do we have use, more users, more instances of uh, smartphones in the network, but those smartphone applications also require more data. Uh, usually video, uh, sometimes streaming music, uh, interactive applications that require more data across these more users on a global basis. So what does this mean in a business sense? To the mobile network operator, this translates into two types of challenges. Coverage, in other words, covering uh, the footprint of their service area so that you can actually get the bars you need when you need them, as well as capacity. It doesn't matter if you have four bars if the network is so slow that your application doesn't work. So what can they do about it? What the degrees of freedom do they have to address these problems? Well, there are several. Uh, on the one hand, we could talk about adding more cell towers. And that certainly is an option, and mobile network operators worldwide are doing just that. But they're expensive, uh, and they're eyesores. Nobody wants one in their backyard. So they're more and more challenging from a regulatory point of view to get more cell towers uh, uh, rolled out. Which leads to our second degree of freedom, which is, well, let's find more spectrum. Let's allocate more spectrum to the cellular network. And certainly that is another option, also an expensive one. In fact, in the United States, we just finished the latest uh, spectrum auction in which uh, $45 billion were spent by mobile network operators in this country just on additional spectrum. Finally, we have a, an element of technology. We can use new technology to make better, more efficient use of that spectrum. Sharing that spectrum dynamically, sharing that spectrum more intelligently, uh, allocating that spectrum to busy areas of the network at different hours of the day. And this is what technologies like LTE, LTEA accomplish for the network operator. But add to that the capability of adding maybe um, more antennas in the field but with lower power, lower footprint, and you essentially ex extend this dimension or this degree of freedom having to do with adding towers. Only they're smaller towers, uh, covering fewer users, and they tend to interfere with each other far less than a macro tower would. And this is the notion of the small cell. So what is a small cell exactly? Well, there are several types on the market, many already being deployed. Uh, they're referred to as femtocells, picocells, microcells, metrocells, a lot of different terms, some of them branded by their vendors, others more generic. A femtocell, for instance, tends to be an indoor small cell used perhaps even in your residence as a cell service extender. Uh, if you have poor service in your home, your uh, mobile operator may actually offer you a femtocell uh, extender so you get better coverage in your home. A Pico cell similarly would be for a small business, uh, again an indoor installation for the most part. Uh, some of these uh, overlap one another in terms of their coverage areas. But what they all have in common is far less power, far less footprint than your traditional macro cell. Similarly in rural areas where macro cells aren't justified because the number of users uh, just isn't high enough to justify the expense of a macro cell, um, a microcell, a metrocell can extend the footprint to a small town, a uh, small community that can justify the, the lower expense of a small cell. So small cells in and of themselves have some challenges. They must be low cost because they, su they uh, support far fewer subscribers. So on a per subscriber basis, they must be far less costly than a microcell. So they need to be very quickly activated, brought into the network, easy to manage, uh, easy on a day-to-day on a -day basis for the, um, for the mobile network operator to diagnose any potential problems, 
uh, and yet very cost effective uh, uh, across the network as, as a whole. And then there are also some physical requirements. They have to be small, uh, physically small, because they might uh, be deployed on a light pole, uh, they might be deployed on a strand of wire uh, between two light poles, they might be deployed on the side of a building, uh, inside a home, inside a business, uh, so they must be small, lightweight, uh, easy to deploy. They also must be powered, uh, which is a challenge in some instances. Uh, where is that power coming from? Uh, how much power is required? Who pays that power bill? Who has access to the small cell and its power source on an ongoing basis for maintenance? So these are not small challenges, uh, but they are being worked in each and every situation uh, across the, the world of, of um, uh, mobile network operators. Finally, they must be connected back into the network. And this is what we refer to as backhaul. So what's becoming obvious is that we need many options, not only for the types of small cells to be deployed in different situations, indoor, outdoor, uh, on the side of a building, on the side of a light post, but also options for backhaul. Uh, and we've, we've capitalized here at Siena on fiber-based options.